most human beings are so immersed in the pleasures of life, when someone comes to tell them, hey, you need to know what's behind the door, they say, man, I'm just too busy having a good time to know or even care what's behind the door. In fact, statistically, by the way, most people don't care. They just don't care. In this country. I don't mean on the whole planet. In this country. We know it because we've done a survey. Most people don't, about 70% of people in this country, done, we did a statistically sound survey. 70% of these people in this country don't want to know about any religion. Not Islam, not Christian, any religion. They just don't want to know. They don't care. Because I presume they're just pretty busy enjoying their life. It's just fine the way it is. Why, why, why would I even need to think about anything else? So that's the first perspective I'd like to put. You know, this portraying life as if it's full of suffering and there's no joy, there's no happiness, right? As, all, as if life is full of neglect and starvation and disease. Whereas in fact, in reality, most people don't really experience that at all. The second perspective I would like to paint is, well, let's be real here. Soon our earth would recede and become an almost insignificant dot. Indeed, if you kept on going a bit further, our whole solar system, including our sun, actually ends up being a small dot on the outer arm of the spiral, of the outer arm of our galaxy, which is called the Milky Way. The Milky Way is estimated to be 10,000 light years across. That means if you travel non-stop for 10,000 years at the speed of light, that is how long it would take you to cross our galaxy. And our galaxy is one of millions of galaxies in the known universe. And that's what we know. Now I'll open the door a little bit. The Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, he said in an authentic narration, he said, the universe compared to the kursi, which you could translate as the chair or the pedestal, or it is the greatest, next greatest created thing after the universe. I don't think we think of it in a literal sense, but the kursi. The universe compared to the kursi is like, imagine this, a ring thrown in the desert. A ring thrown in the desert. That's our universe compared to the kursi. And the kursi compared to the arsh, which means the throne, is also like a ring thrown in the desert. What is incredible is that the one who is above the Arsh should care about us at all. That is incredible. I mean, if we were to anthropomorphize God, you know, you walk along the you walk along the floor, you don't care what insect you crush, what ant you crush, right? What animal you destroy. You drive in your car, you don't really care how many bugs splatter on your windscreen. I mean, what are we? What are we? We're just dots on a dot in a galaxy that's a dot, in the universe that's a dot before the kursi, which is a dot before the arsh. That's the perspective, right? However, of course, there is this what I would say is an almost arrogant assertion that you find some religions make, that we are sons and daughters of God. Whatever that is supposed to mean. I mean, if I came today, yeah, and in my glass here I had little fish, yeah, I said, this is Jonah, my son. Yeah. You say, but Mr. Green, that's, that's a fish. No, that's my son. Yeah, he has a place on the table. You know, he eats dinner with us. Right? He has, a, he has his own room in the house. 
and uh, under our new laws, the adoption papers are coming through next week. He's my son, but you say he's a fish. You may love him like a son, right? But the, this is a fish and you are a human being. You can't take something that is not like you to be your son. It doesn't actually in language have meaning. It doesn't have a meaning. So this assertion that we are sons and daughters of God, well, the Qur'an tells us that God is glorious above such things. If, and God is glorious above such a thing, if God had wanted or wished to take for himself as a son, he would have taken something more like himself. But this is the mentality we have. So from that mentality comes a sort of assertion like, who is God to treat us like this? It's ridiculous to think like that. In fact, who are you even to question God? He can do what He likes. With who He likes. And who are we? What are we? Nothing. Totally powerless before the power of God. We are His, and this is the first, therefore, assertion that we need to make. We are His creatures, slaves, servants. That is all we are. We are the creatures of God, the creation of God. Limited, finite, temporary, mortal, needy. That is what defines us as human beings. That is the reality of our condition. So that's the perspective I would like to put on this whole question. Point number two. Therefore, what is the purpose of our life? Why do we exist? For what, what are we human beings supposed to do with our life? This is an interesting question. Indeed, if I was asked, most people, and I often do. I said, what's your shoes? Yeah. It's okay, you can stick them out there and relax and chill out. Brother. Your shoes, what are they for? Walking. Walking. And those bits of string on, on your shoes, bro, what are they for? They your kidneys, your lungs. Every single component part of your body has a purpose. In fact, if we begin to look in the whole universe, it gets even more extraordinary. You know there's a moth? There is a moth. Right? This moth lives in the Amazon jungle. Right? And the sole purpose of this moth is to eat the poo of another moth. That's what it does. There's a big moth, and underneath it lives a little moth, and the, this little moth eats the poo of that big moth. Right? I didn't see this myself. This is something someone told me. All right? Now, if this little moth was not there, then what would happen is this poo would trickle down the tree and the ants would come up and they would eat this big moth. I mean, the point being is that how there is a place for everything. Everything has a purpose. So now let's answer this question. What is your purpose? For what reason do you exist? And I don't, by the way, mean you personally what you want to do with your life. What I mean is... What is the reason and the purpose of the existence of human beings? Why do human beings exist? What is our function on this planet? You can't just say to reproduce and just exist. We've already identified, you know, your shoes have a purpose, your pen has a purpose, right? Your ears, your nose, is it conceivable that every individual part of your body has a purpose? but the totality of you does not have a purpose? Is it possible that this small moth, I should learn its name, has a purpose, but you don't have a purpose? So there is a fundamental question. Yes, that's why a lot of us have ontological anxiety. It's that question. What is the purpose of life? Why are we here? What's it all for?